I'll tell the first joke. Who is the most famous skeleton detective? Beat me. Sherlock Bones. Mm. That reminds me of one. Who is the most famous French skeleton? Napoleon Bonaparte. Hey, Bonehead. It's that time again. Yep. Time for another song. This food smells awful. I think I'm going to be sick. Tomorrow I'm going to look for a job at a better catering company and see about going to night school so I can get a better job. I'm sure the smell of the shish kebab cooking on the spit is making you hungry. Here's how the dancers work. It's pretty simple, so really. There's a 2x6 that has a slow sin motor attached to it that's closest to us in blue. And then there's uh, belts and pulleys that, uh, that slow down the motor and uh, make an overall rotation and then separately a rotation to the dancers. The smoking cauldron is done with four ultrasonic foggers, not dry ice. The, the motion of the stirring stick is done by rotating the whole bowl with a gear motor which is underneath the bowl. The coffin is run by an Arduino that runs four servos. There's one very strong servo with external gears that makes the uh, skeleton sit up. There's also some springs to take some of the weight off of it. This servo mounted on the back of the coffin pulls down the back of the lid to raise the lid. Finally, there's two servos in this skull. One that rotates the neck and one which moves the jaw up and down. One motor, a belt, and four pulleys makes the witch which flies across the moon. This is behind the skyline. The Grim Reaper, or GR as we call him, is just a motor running an offset cam, which makes his knee go up and down, and the toe taps just via the mechanism with the same motor. This candy is actually a hologram. 
I took real candy, put it in the treasure chest, took many pictures, and used software to make a 3D model, then shipped that off to a company who made a computer-generated hologram out of it, which is then mounted behind glass. It was quite a production to make the barrel that the pirate sits on. Here I'm making the staves. These started out as part of a 2x4, cut it into thin slices, and here I'm bending them over a jig I made, which gives the curvature of the stave on the side of the barrel. And here I'm running it through a table saw to cut it at the right angle, and we'll actually end up tapering it just right for the barrel. Here I take it off and flip it around so I can cut the other side. And then I'll trim the other side. I must say that this whole production gave me a uh, real respect for Cooper who does these things by hand. Here's a pile of staves. Note the slots to help them bend. A jig for assembly. Gradually add staves to the jig and then tighten up the hose clamps and uh, lo and behold you have a barrel. Not watertight but looks pretty good. Here's the electronics for the skeleton rock band, the Skeletones. There are four cheap MP3 players on the right giving eight channels of sound. Two provide stereo sound for the band and two are the voices of the singing skulls. The other four channels have on-off tones used to control the servos that move the arms of the skeletons. The Arduino on the left simultaneously starts all four MP3 players by simulating button presses. The Arduino also reads the four control tone outputs and uses them to move the servos. The servos are mounted on a platform above the skeletons and pull strings to move their limbs.